on your side is Gary Harper. Surprise medical bills, they're never fun to get in the mail, but it happens all the time. The federal government is trying to crack down, but Consumer Reports says it may not be enough. Last March, Consumer Reports writer Donna Rosado found herself in a serious health emergency. She had a fever and a cough, and after going to her local emergency room, was rushed to a larger hospital by ambulance. I had a cough that wouldn't go away and a fever that spiked to 103. So I went to the emergency room where I suddenly became unable to breathe. I was put on a ventilator for 10 days and I spent a few weeks in an ICU where I slowly recovered from the flu and pneumonia. When Donna finally was allowed to go home, she was greeted with a pile of medical bills. It might be surprising to learn that the biggest bill she owed was for the ambulance ride, which was not covered by her insurance company, and she's not alone. A recent study found more than three out of four ground ambulance rides could result in an out-of-network bill, and those bills are likely not going away anytime soon. They are not part of the new legislation called the No Surprises Act, aimed at eliminating surprise medical bills that can arise from out-of-network providers, often in emergencies. If we're protecting patients from surprise bills once they get to the emergency room, why not protect them from the surprise bill on the way to the emergency room? Ambulance providers and insurers often disagree on what is a fair rate for this essential life-saving service. Ambulance companies say they provide costly, labor-intensive services, and insurance reimbursements are too low for them to be in-network. That means patients like Donna are often left footing a hefty bill, but there are some ways to fight back. A few states like Ohio, New York, Colorado, and Maryland have passed laws against surprise medical bills that include restrictions on ground ambulances. Also, ask your insurer to review the claim. If it's still not covered, contact the ambulance company and ask if they can lower the charge or offer a payment plan. Talking to my insurer did the trick for me. A few weeks after I contacted my insurer and asked them to review the bill again, I got a notice that they paid the ambulance provider an additional $1,500, covering all but $283 of the original $3,000 bill. And Consumer Reports says the No Surprises Act will go into effect January of next year. I'm Gary Harper, three on your side.